Peter, let's talk about the first step in writing a screenplay. Yeah, the first step is what turns you on. Uh, that's always what it is. Uh, you should never write to the market. Uh, the market will always horrify you. Um, right now what's selling are superhero stories uh, to the studios. Um, but if you don't like writing superhero stories, you shouldn't say, oh, well, I'm going to write one anyway because you'll fail. Um, you have to write from passion. In my experience, um, yes, even writers who are professionals. Um, you write from what you love and you write from what embarrasses you and you write from your core wounds. We all have uh, things that we love to talk about and those come from our core wounds. And I say every storyteller is wounded and they're trying to tell a story to heal that wound. We all have a dozen core wounds. Uh, I'm ugly, my mother didn't love me, uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm badly uh, uh, socialized, uh, no one understands me, I go to a party, uh, I can't talk to anybody, no one will listen to me, I'm lonely, I'm alone, um, I can't reach out, I'm married but I'm, I'm not happy because I really can't be myself. There's all these wounds we all have and we carry them inside ourselves. That's really what we're always writing about, always. Uh, and this is true for untherapized writers who are very successful, even if they've never looked at a psychologist's couch and they laugh at this. When I work with them, turns out what they're writing about always is their core wound. So ask yourself as a storyteller, what, do I, what am I interested in? What are the movies I love? I guarantee you when you do that, you'll find out that is your place where you need to start. Are you interested in love? No, no, I'm interested in computers. Well, then you might want to write a sci-fi movie because you're sort of uh, uh, mechanicized and, and that's, your, that's your bliss. But I guarantee you that comes from a core wound too. So you must start with what excites you and then shaping it is just a matter of after you've done a passion draft, what I call just a draft of whatever you want your story to be about. It could be a paragraph, it could be a line, it could be 50 pages. Then it's time to think about how do I want to shape this? Because the shape is always going to be the same. If it's a movie or a television show, the shape will always be the same. And learning what that shape is, is your job as a screenwriter, is your job as a television writer. But it must have come from your passion. I always ask my class, Stand up right now and tell me the most embarrassing thing about yourself you could ever tell anyone, the thing that would make you cringe horribly if anybody knew it. Can you stand up and do that? Of course, no one will. So I do. I stand up and I say, look at my face. And when you look at, and I don't want you to shout this out, but when you look at my face, tell, pick out the worst feature in my face and the best feature. Don't tell me, because I, I did a Korean television interview a little while ago, and the guy goes, you have a giant mole on your cheek. And I'm like, well, gee, I didn't really want to know that. But just tell me, but just have it in your head. What's my best feature and my worst feature, okay? Now most people pick one thing out and then the other. And then they start kind of, oh, I don't want to tell them, I know what it is. Now I say, okay, now I'm going to tell you a secret about myself, something really embarrassing. When I was a teenager, I had this problem. And it's, it was a very embarrassing problem. I had something called body dysmorphia. And it, I don't know if you know what that is, but it makes you feel like you either have something too big or too small about your appearance. I thought that my lips were the size of Mick Jagger, so that when I would go into a room, I thought everyone was staring at my lips. They were huge. I, I'd knock people over with them. I wouldn't kiss a girl in high school because I was afraid my lips would get wet and then they would look even bigger. So here's what I did about that. All these things came out of that wound in high school for me. One. I wore white chapstick, okay, which made me appear I was wearing lipstick. Now I had long hair and I was in a band. So every time someone would look at me, I'd be thinking, oh, they, they, they're looking at my lips, they're huge. No, they were looking at the fact that that dude has long hair and he's wearing lipstick. He must be gay. That's not what I thought. I would also eat my lunch in the bathroom because I didn't want people to see my wet lips. So you see that this one wound, oh, by the way, I got therapy, I'm over it now. But this one wound was motivating all these things they did. I wouldn't have a girlfriend. I actually, I was a pretty good looking guy in high school, but I couldn't do it because I actually did have some, but it was a horrible experience because every time I'd kiss them, I'd have to use the white chapstick. 
So you see where I'm going. When I tell people this story, they're like, first of all, they're sort of uncomfortable, and then they're, they kind of want to laugh, and then they're just interested because it's true. Anything you tell about yourself that's true, that's embarrassing, is fascinating to an audience. All great story comes from these kinds of confessions, I call them. This is a device you use to make your hero compelling. It's a confession of some embarrassment that you had in your life. We love to see that because we're all embarrassed. We all feel these wounds. We all have them. And when we see them in a story, we recognize them as real, and we love that person, and we want that person. We're rooting for that person. Every great story starts with a character wounded like this, unless it's a superhero. <laughs> that's, a, that's a separate genre. That has their own rules. But most of the movies you love have a hero who's wounded, and it comes from the writer himself and the wounds that he has and how he tries to compensate for those. That's the physical manifestations in the story of his behavior. Me hiding in the bathroom. Me wearing white chapstick. I played football, but I wore white chapstick. Contradictions, why? I was a big guy, but long hair, lipstick, and I didn't know it. I thought people were staring at me because of my lips. No, they weren't. So all these things you don't know about yourself, learning them is a story. That's what makes great stories.